One person is dead, a family waiting for answers, and San Antonio police are looking for a shooter. The latest details from the scene on the city's east side. Ukraine military members using a forbidden area to train for possible war. Ahead in your morning headlines, David Sears explains why they're using Chernobyl for training and how Ukrainian residents are responding to the possibility of an attack. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Take a look around. This isn't a video game cafe. This is VFW Post 8541. We're going to explain why all these games are here and what it means for Military City USA. You know, it's officially rodeo time in San Antonio when the dirt starts moving into the AT&T Center. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Can you guys guess how many truckloads it takes to fill this arena? We'll have the answer for you in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend as we started to thaw out. It is Monday, February 7th. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. And it's still cold out there, relatively 45 degrees, but much better than the 20s. You can see Sarah still has her hat on. Yes. Appropriately dressed for the weather. So it's cold inside the AT&T Center, just like it's been on the outside. But we began that warm up in earnest yesterday afternoon. Boy, it's nice to see sunshine and only a few clouds. I agree. It's going to turn out to be a pretty nice day, pretty nice week in general. And you, know, you talk about those cold temperatures. My plants, they, they did suffer a little bit, but I'm thinking if my plants can make it through last year and this year, they're going to be in good shape going forward. Now we're going to see a lot of blue skies and sun for the rest of the week. 46 right now, 40 in Kerrville, 36 in Rock, Rock Springs, 46 right now in Uvalde. 45 down there in Carrizo Springs and temperatures are very quickly warming up. We should be close to 60 this afternoon, 65 on Tuesday, close to 70 by Wednesday and uh, really the rest of the week looks awesome too. Let's look at the satellite picture and you'll see that we do have some clouds trying to work and I think by the afternoon you may see a few thin high clouds. Not a big deal though. No rain with those clouds. Pauling count is in. Mountain Cedar did jump back up. Sort of its last gasp, I hope, as we get a little bit closer to Valentine's Day, the unofficial end to Mountain Cedar season. 240 today. Molds are low at 80. And your forecast again today, 54 noon time, 58 by 2 p.m., mostly sunny this afternoon, up to 60 by 4 p.m. Winds will be a little bit breezy from time to time out of the north, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Right before the newscast began, Justin spotted that on Transguide 4, and I know it's on a rotator right now, but if we can circle back around or punch up eastbound Highway 90 at Nogalitas, there's a major accident causing backups on the inbound lanes of Highway 90. There were a number of San Antonio fire units, including look like some of those uh, big trucks out there at 90, again at Nogalitos, and about the time uh, we say goodbye to this these cameras, that's when it'll there pop it back is. up. There it is, there 90 it is. eastbound at Nogalitos. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. The White House says the timeline for Russia further invading Ukraine is, quote, in the window. Russian military personnel are moving into position along the Ukrainian border, and NATO is preparing to respond if needed. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin continues to say Russia is not preparing for war. The investigation continues this morning to determine why a Navy SEAL candidate died and another was hospitalized after completing Hell Week. The two sailors were hospitalized hours after an underwater training class. 24-year-old Kyle Mullen died in the hospital. The other sailor is expected to survive. The CDC is reporting that 212 million Americans are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19, amounting to 64% of the nation. Only one state has less than half their residents vaccinated now, and that is Alabama. The CDC estimates that about one in five Americans have not been vaccinated at all. Jury selection begins this morning in the federal hate crimes trial for the three men who killed Ahmaud Arbery. Federal attorneys will try to prove the men chased down and shot the 25-year-old to death because of his race. The McMichaels and William Roddy Bryan have already been sentenced to life in prison after their convictions in Georgia State Court last year. A court hearing is scheduled for this morning for a New Orleans Saints Pro Bowl running back Alvin Kamara. He was arrested and charged with battery yesterday afternoon after finishing in the Pro Bowl. Las Vegas police say they were called to a hospital Saturday night for a person involved in an altercation on the Las Vegas Strip. The investigation led police to Kamara, who's in jail on a $5,000 bond. 
rising battery prices may start to put the brakes on the growth of electric vehicles. For more than a decade, the cost of batteries has dropped. However, prices for some key ingredients are now surging, including cobalt, nickel sulfate, and lithium carbonate. Queen Elizabeth II has become the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum jubilee. That means she's been on the throne for 70 years. Could Peloton have a new owner soon? Several reports are circulating claiming Amazon and Nike have contacted Peloton about a possible deal. No official statement has been made by Peloton, Nike or Amazon. The original Peloton bike sells for more than $1,700, including shipping. CandyStore.com released a list of the top-selling Valentine's Day candies for each state. Texas loves Hershey's Kisses. According to the website, Valentine's Day candy sales dropped more than 20% last year because of the pandemic. But this year, the National Retail Federation expects near-record-breaking candy sales. And that's today's 9 at 9. It is officially Rodeo Week in good old San Antonio. It all starts with all that dirt moving right into the AT&T Center. Sarah Costa is live at the arena where the dirt has already started to move in. Good morning. <laughs> Hey, good morning. They actually put me to work, guys. I'm in a skid steer, and what this does is it moves uh, the dirt up. There you go. Look at that. And then if you tilt, you can tilt it. You can tilt it. Oh, wait, no. So you can tilt it. That's how you release the dirt like that. I'm doing so good. Um, now I need to figure out how to put this thing back down. Okay. Maybe you guys don't want me <laughs> working here. But hey, it's officially rodeo time. You know it's rodeo time when the dirt officially moves into the AT&T arena. And I'm joined here by Bernie. Can you help me out, sir? Thank you so much. Whew. All right. I don't, you don't want me driving this thing because I'm a little scared. I can barely drive a regular car. But you were telling me something really interesting. This dirt was purchased back in 1988 and it's the same dirt used every single year. That is correct, Sarah. Thank you for having us this morning. Uh, yes, it was purchased in 1988 from down the road in Charlotte, Texas. And uh, we keep it here on the grounds every year. And every year we, uh, we bring it down in here. Uh, we uh, maintain it and uh, it's covered up during the year out of the weather and uh, it's a huge savings to the rodeo, $20,000 to $25,000 it saves us from having to bring it in every year and uh, that money gets to go to our scholarship funds and, and uh, to further our mission statement. Now I know we're the saying old as dirt, like I really feel old as dirt because I was born in 1988 and I'm old as this dirt here at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. You know, when you get to see this dirt move in, how does it make you feel? Because it really, you really know, okay, things are starting. That is correct. You know, when, when uh, machinery starts coming in here and the logistics of it kicks off, uh, it's just a few days away. And we know that we have a timeline that we have to keep. And uh, the people that have been doing this over the years just know what needs to be done. It gets done. It's uh, pretty much a, a well-oiled machine. And uh, it gets taken care of in, uh, in uh, a lot of time that we have. So many logistics go into this. Okay, I teased you guys earlier. So how many truckloads, how many tons, and how many... Um, how many hours does it take to get everything done here in the arena? You know, it takes about 70 truckloads to be brought in here. And um, it'll take in the course of the day about seven hours or so to get it all in here and to get it spread out where it needs to be. Awesome. Well, Bernie, thank you so much. And remember, the rodeo officially kicks off this Thursday entertainment. Uh, the grounds open at 10 a.m. And entertainment with Toby Keith kicks off at 7 p.m. Back to you guys. We'll be ready. Thank you, Sarah. Top stories we're following for you today. A shooting outside an east side home early this morning has turned deadly. San Antonio police say people inside the home woke up to the sounds of gunfire around 530 this morning. Then they found a relative on the ground in the driveway of the home in the 200 block of Longview Drive. Officers who responded to that scene discovered that he had been shot multiple times. The man in his 20s was rushed to a hospital, but the medical examiner's office has confirmed he later died. Police say they have no information on who shot him or why. Taking you south of downtown now, defective fireplace is being blamed for destroying a house overnight. Happened around 1 this morning on Cass Avenue, not far from 35 and Nogalitos. Firefighters say the fire had spread from the chimney to the attic by the time they got there. While the homeowner was able to make it out, that house is being called a total loss. 
Mayor Kerrville is issuing a disaster declaration in response to the wintry weather that hit the area along with other parts of Texas. This declaration will allow the city to use resources provided city and state as part of the emergency management plan. You might remember on Thursday, an 18-wheeler jackknife on I-10 out near Kerrville causing traffic to be stopped and backed up overnight for many, many hours. One person died as a result of that crash. The 18-wheeler crashed into a Ford F-350 and one person inside died. Another person was injured. The disaster declaration will last for seven days unless the Kerrville mayor sees a reason to extend it. In your morning headlines, what citizens of Ukraine think about a possible war with Russia and a crossing guard held a hero. A rescue from a floating chunk of ice and a leaping toads and what? Leaping toads and troopers. Troopers. Okay, got it. Okay, gotcha. All right. Left out an O in troopers. That's okay. I just didn't want to get it wrong. I thought I'd put right. it in your hands, David. <laughs> All right, well, so we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. But first. There's a lot of tension on the Ukrainian-Russian border. Russia continues to build up the number of troops in the region. They are adding 30,000 more just 10 miles from the border of Belarus and Ukraine. There are several seemingly odd circumstances as the world waits to see the next move by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Across the border from where those Russian troops are deployed, Ukrainian troops are in training in the shadow of what remains from one of the worst disasters in the world the Chernobyl nuclear reactor meltdown back in 1986. The troops are preparing for war in what's still known as the radiation exclusion zone. While the Ukrainian military continues to prepare, it is hard for civilians to come to grips with the possibility of an attack by Putin like a 64-year-old great-grandma. Will Putin go to war with civilians? He won't do that. I have brothers and sisters living in Russia, in Belarus. I would dissolve the parliament in Kiev, kick them out of parliament, every last one of them. They should give the people proper pensions so the people won't be beggars. The resident of another community not far away says if there is war, nobody will come out a winner. Back home, Maryland. This is an officer working the crosswalk. Here comes a student and the officer's going to hold her hand up, stop the car. Here comes a car right here and watch how fast this officer reacts when the car does not stop. Got that student out of the way just in time. The officer got clipped. The student is kind of standing over the officer in a little bit of shock of what just happened. But you can see that the driver of the car gets out and then some other people come running over to assist that officer. Police Corporal Annette Goodyear was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The woman driving was fined for failing to yield at a crosswalk, negligent driving and driving with an expired registration. The officer is going to receive accommodation for doing the heroic job of saving that young student. The city will accommodate her pretty soon. Watch those school crossings. This is Lake Erie and that is a chunk of ice that has broken off away from the shore. See these little bitty black dots down here? Those are people. They're snowmobilers on the lake. They ended up stranded on that floating chunk of ice. And as you can see, the gap between the ice was getting wider and wider. All of a sudden, the 18 needed to be rescued. The Coast Guard sent in a chopper and an airboat. The helicopter picked up seven. The Coast Guard airboat got four. And then a good Samaritan was able to get the rest of those stranded using his airboat. We do have limits to our rescue assets, so it was it was a very good help that they were able to take seven people. That was a very big deal. Hey, Rick Horton loves the cold so much. Every year he's able to create his snow sculptures in front of his home in Greenfield, Indiana. And yes, that is a bullfrog. He's doing it as a tribute to his youth when he used to catch frogs in the summertime. Horton is known as the snow artist on Facebook. He started sculpturing snow back in 1997. The bullfrog took about 12 hours. He used water-based paint to give it that green, authentic color. And finally this morning, an officer in Idaho is searching a the van. There goes the cat, and there goes the officer. Oh, diving snag of that cat, right? Here it is in slow-mo instant replay for you. Look at that dive. <laughs> Got it. Either that cat was trying to escape or didn't want any part of a, what was about to happen. The state trooper pulled that van over, then found a controlled substance. Two people in the van were arrested. Oh. And the poor cat was taken to animal control. Wow. So the trooper had the reflexes of a mm. cat. trooper? He's good. Or a cat. <laughs> or a cat. <laughs> Both. Okay. That's cat like quickness right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, like it that. is. Like Just that. one wow. second later or not leaping well, far enough, and right. the cat would have been long gone. Out of there.
All right, thank you, David. We'll see you a little bit later on. Right now, 912, about 45 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Almost a month later in the search for missing three-year-old Lena Kill, still going strong. Look at the latest efforts underway to find clues. Could urban development pose a threat to the natural caves up in Comal County? Justin Horn takes us underground to explain some of those concerns. But first, we take you live to a local veterans post where a 21st century upgrade is helping veterans who need a space to unwind. Welcome back, 916, 13 gaming stations, live video game streaming, and three projectors. We're not talking about some fancy sports bar or arcade. We're talking about VFW Post 8541. And Max Massey joins us live right now. Max, you showed us this facility at the start of the pandemic. So how's it different now? Yes, guys. So as our producer just put it, you're getting paid to play video games. This is the dream right now. I'm not very good at it, though. I actually can't find anyone else, but I think that's just a me thing. All right, either way, take a look around. Like you said, 13 video game stations. We already got two people in here. Early this morning playing games, joined here with Chris Espinoza. So, Chris, why have this facility inside the VFW? It's a great place for younger veterans to connect. Um, gaming has been uh, essential for our well-being as, as we were going, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was fairly new over there, and we built... Um, gaming systems and you know we played xbox we had land parties things like that so when we left we never really had that same camaraderie when we did it here at this vfw so veterans again can set up shop and you know have a video game party here and uh, and get together and you guys started building this in the start of the pandemic you were shut down what did that mean for you it, it was rough because you know us shutting down meant that we were not going to be open for, for the people that need the VFW. You know, this is where all their friends are. This is where they come to get away. You know, some of them don't even have family. We're their family. So we took that opportunity during COVID to uh, improve our foxhole that we have here. And, you know, while it was shut down, we continued to make improvements not only here, but in our event hall center as well. Uh, and with that being said, you know, once, you know, COVID restrictions lifted up. It was a place where, where people could come in and just, you know, have high speed internet and game and, and, you know, have a drink or two or, you know, just come and hang out really, basically. And this has meant so much for veterans. You're a big advocate of mental health. Yes. What has it meant for mental health of Military City USA? You know, you know, because of COVID, again, you know, that isolation will breed depression and, you know, you don't want to see young soldiers or anybody really um, just go through that, you know, that sense of being alone. You know, I know they have gaming online, but may, they might not have the resources to do so. By coming over here, they have the resources and they have that face-to-face -face contact with other people. And like I said, I'm a big advocate for mental health. You know, I've been down that road and I've seen how this will help me personally as well as other veterans, young veterans and old. All right. You said, uh, you showed a funny story. You had a youngest veteran, 19, and then the oldest one, 98? I think A98, and we all get along. <laughs> well, you know, oh, you remember Pong? He's like, what is that? You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, there's still a disconnect, but we all get it, and we're all friendly here, and we all, we all get along, you know, with, with each other. It's very fun. Chris Espinosa, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys, if you have any questions, we're going to have so much more coming up on the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. Mr. Massey, thank you. Live from VFW Post 8541. And we woke up to the 40s again. Uh, kind of cold, but not as cold as those 20s, although I guess the lows elsewhere a little low this morning. Yeah, a little chilly. But look, I mean, we had a stretch there. We hit some really cold temperatures down in the low 20s here in San Antonio. That uh, that killed a lot of the plants, as I talked about earlier, at least put them in a bad situation. Uh, temperatures this morning, though, not below freezing. Look at that, 39 here in San Antonio. That was the low. 34 Bernie stage did get down to freezing in Kerrville. 30 there. And as we look at the wider view, 44 Del Rio, 41 in Carrizo Springs, 40 in Gonzales this morning. So these numbers were a lot warmer. A little bit of cloud cover helped and uh, just an overall change in the weather pattern here. Let's talk about the number of freeze days we've had so far. By my count, we're at 13 for the season. We've had four days, though, below 25. All of those coming in early February, the coldest being February 4th, where we got down to 21 degrees. We averaged, by the way, about 15 freezes and if you're curious, we've had as many as 40 in a season before. So we're pretty average this year. It's just that the freezes we have seen have been rather intense. Uh, again, down in the low 20s there for a couple days in early February. Here's the big picture across the state. We've got some showers 
Uh, actually, some pretty good heavy rain as you go into deep south Texas, places like Brownsville, seeing some heavy rain this morning. But most of the rest of Texas is very, very quiet. Uh, with that system passing through, we do have some high clouds that will stream in today. Shouldn't be a big issue. Just some thin clouds. Uh, they may scale around the sun a little bit, but not much. Uh, we're going to see plenty of sun today. We're certainly seeing it right now. Blue skies, 46 degrees. Dew point is at 30. Northerly winds at 17 miles per hour. So there is a wind chill. It feels like 39 right now with those gusty north winds. And temperatures, 41 burning stage, 43 comfort. 39 right now in Lost Maples. 50 in Del Rio, 46 degrees. So springs in some 50s as you get closer to the coast. I mentioned that wind chill. It does feel like 39 here in town, 35 in Kerrville. We're, we're still in February. We're still going to get some of these chilly mornings, but the afternoons are going to be really pretty nice. Wind gusts, gusting to 23 here in town, gusting to 20 in Kerrville. So uh, that's why we're looking at some of those wind chills. Gusts today, probably up around 20 or so, maybe up to 25 in some cases. And then the winds will die down some tonight. Here's the forecast up to around 60 here in town, mid 50s in the hill country. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, uh, again, avoiding a freeze for the most part. It is going to be a little colder, I think, tomorrow morning, but 34 here in town, 33 Kerrville, probably a little colder there in Kerrville. They could see another freeze tomorrow morning. As we look at the forecast down the line, there's really not a lot to show you here other than by the time we get into Friday, and we fast forwarded through most of the week because it's, it's, it's quiet, there's a little cutoff low that tries to develop, at least according to one of the models, and that may kick up a few showers on Saturday. I don't think the chances are really all that good. And most of the work week, obviously, really nice. 65 Tuesday, 68 Wednesday, 67 Thursday. Overnight lows will be in the 30s and 40s. I did put in a 20% chance of rain on Saturday with some mostly cloudy skies. Other than that, this is a quiet forecast. And I think we deserve it yeah. after last week's busy scenario. Agreed. Yeah. Across the board. Thank you very much, Justin. 922, 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. The family and search party for Lena Kill not giving up. They spent the weekend searching for her. And look at their latest efforts next. Here in San Antonio, we are entering the sixth week since three year Lena Kill disappeared. As the search continues, the community not giving up hope. A group of volunteers on Sunday were focusing on O.P. Schnabel Park on the northwest side. Many said it was their first time searching. They were looking for anything that looked out of place, and one volunteer says she can't sit by another day knowing Lena isn't home. We can't just sit and keep observing. We need to get out and, and do what we can for this poor little girl. SAPD is still asking for tips in Lena's uh, missing persons case. You can reach their unit at 210-207-7660. The Islamic Center of San Antonio and Crime Stoppers offering wards that total $150,000 combined. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. If you have an ex-Valentine with a warrant, there's a way you could get back at them. RJ Marquez explains this after the break. And could the rapid development of Comal County be threatening the natural caves? We're going to take you underground to explain the worry. And checking out the roads one more time, the incident at eastbound 90 at Nogalitos is slow to clear. It looks like we have two lanes blocked off and a big slowdown. You see traffic easing past that scene, but leading up to it, it's still a bit of a log jam. We'll be back. Welcome back, 930. This morning on KSAT.com, Good Samaritans and HEB workers team up to rescue a dog off the streets and help it find a new forever home. Plus how you can get your student into the Guinness Book of World Records. And a Valentine's Day deal in West Texas has received a lot of attention because it could land your ex in jail. Mm. RJ Marcus is with us this morning to explain <laughs> that and some other top stories on our website. As yes. he chuckles delightedly. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, uh, it's an interesting post here that uh, we'll tell you guys here a little bit. X is getting a lot of, uh, getting a lot of bad juju here this Valentine's. Yeah. The zoo's doing their thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of ways to get back at your ex if uh, that's the way you want to go about it. <laughs> right. this year. Speaking of bad juju. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, okay, let's start with a good story here. So a pup named Fred has a whole new leash on life. Yes, leash, all thanks to some HEB workers and shoppers who helped rescue him on a cold night after he was hit by a vehicle. So here's the story. Fred was crossing the street on January 21st when he was hit near an HEB store. So the driver did not stop to help, but several people on the street ran to check out Fred's injuries. Some Good Samaritans and HEB workers put sweaters and blankets over him. Some shoppers even tried to get him some food and water. So one HEB employee who goes by Miss C kept an eye on Fred 
Fred during her shift and shared the story of Fred on her Facebook page, and it was shared over 3,000 times. So ACS found out about this, started caring for Fred and helped him recover, and now he's been adopted with a loving owner. So ACS Facebook post added, happy tales, Fred, Aww. as they uh, got him into his new forever home. Yeah, great story there yeah. from those uh, people that came together to help him out. Read that over the weekend, one of my favorite stories on yeah. ksat.com. Yeah, so now Fred's living, he's going to be warm now. He's not Good. having to stay out the cold <laughs> much any longer. Okay, guys, so moving on here. So an ode to Texas kids is coming in the form of a seven-foot-tall book. Yes, a seven-foot-tall book titled I Am Texas, and students are being asked to take part. So this is going on across the street state. Texas students from third graders to seniors are being asked to submit fictional or non-fictional stories, poems, or drawings that follow the I Am Texas theme. So when it's all said and done, the book will be the largest book in the world, literally the largest and tallest, and this will be by kids for kids, and it will also have over a thousand pieces of work from students across the state. Submissions are due by March 2nd, and they can be made online at IamTexas.org. IamTexas.org. There's prize money available for the best ones, and Scholarships available as well. So after this book debuts to the public, it will be, be displayed permanently at the Bryan Museum or at the Bryan Museum in Galveston. That's right. In so, Galveston. yeah. So pretty cool uh, event going yeah. on here. A lot of kids could take part. I wonder if it just means like, how do you define being from Texas? Maybe that seems what the yeah. subject would be. I, mm -hmm. I would pretty sure it had something to do yeah. with that. Yeah. Probably some Alamo stuff from here. That would be kind of the, <laughs> the, ones, the submissions from here. <laughs> All right, guys. So here's our interesting Valentine's Day story that we've been talking about. So Valentine's Day is a week away. I cannot believe that. One week away. And Odessa Crime Stoppers out there in West Texas has a sweet deal if you would like to get back at an ex with an outstanding warrant. So on Friday, Crime Stoppers there posted on their Facebook page about their Valentine's Day special. In the post, they wrote that the special starts off with a set of limited edition platinum bracelets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Free transportation with a chauffeur, cool. Wow. A one night minimum stay at a luxurious five star accommodations. Five star, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> And professional glamour shots. Okay. Yes, oh, <laughs> that's wow. pretty funny. And this special, of course, guys, is all capped off with a special Valentine's Day dinner. So, <laughs> very creative there. Uh, they added they know that this Valentine's Day deal for your ex may be too sweet to pass up, so operators are standing by right now. I love the sub headline there. Give us a call with their location and we'll take care of the rest. <laughs> yep. I mean, oh, you really, really wow. want to have to get back at an X in order for that to. Wow. <laughs> but the writing's call. great. I love it. Yeah. It's super creative yeah. and obviously is getting a lot of attention there for Odessa Crime Stoppers. We'll have to find out if it led if it to worked. anything. Yeah, yeah that'd be that's good. true. The numbers. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting stuff there. Right. More on ksat.com. Yeah. RJ, thank you. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank you so much. And taking a look outside with a live can. Still kind of chilly out there. We're at 47 degrees, but uh, we can see the sun, so that's a good sign. Sun is out. Blue skies are out. It's going to be a gorgeous day. Uh, temperatures right now in, in the mid 40s, but we're going to see those numbers warm up pretty quickly. As we look around the area, temperatures generally in the mid 40s, although you'll still find a few 30s as you get up to Rock Springs and Junction. Let's zoom out some and take a look at the rest of the state. Typical cold spots, Love it, Camarillo, they're in the 20s and 30s this morning, so some freezing numbers there. But most of the state is thawing out from that big freeze that we saw last week. Visible satellite picture shows that we've got some rain down there around Brownsville. Uh, very southern tip of Texas there, but moving away for the most part. We've got a few clouds trying to work in from the west. Shouldn't be a big deal. There's another look outside, and the temperature at this hour here in town, 46. Dew point is at 30. Gusty north winds at 17 miles per hour. It's probably one of the reasons Mountain Cedar kicked up a little bit today. And the forecast calls for 54 noontime, 58 by 2 p.m., 60 your high temperature today. Northerly winds 10 to 15 and gusty. If you like today, you'll love the next four to five days. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Checking Transcad real quick. Uh, we now estimate this accident should be in the clearing stages. Eastbound Highway 90 at Nogalitos. At least the exit ramp is open, but a couple of lanes are still blocked off. This one's taken a little while, folks. And Comal County is one of the fastest growing country, counties in the country, and there's no secret why. The scenery is beautiful. It's a great place to live up for some. That's exactly why rapid development is concerning. Comal County sits on the Edwards Aquifer Recharge Zone, is home to many conduits to that aquifer. So Justin Horn goes underground to explain the worry. 
In the Texas Hill Country, caves are plentiful, like this one that Gary Schindel, president of the National Speleological Society, takes us into in Comal County. A small entrance opens to a virtual history book of the area's most valued natural resource, the aquifer. So at one time, the cave was filled with water, and then as the water levels have dropped over geologic time, it's left these relics uh, of conduits that move water through the system and that. And so these caves allow us to look at the fabric of the limestone to understand better how groundwater moves through the system, how it goes from recharge to discharge. And that happens fast, the water discharging out of the area's many springs, which is why some feel preserving these caves is crucial. It's vitally important because water is life, right? And we have uh, these caves are basically direct conduits to the water supply. Helen Ballou, a consultant for Comal County Conservation Alliance, believes Comal County runs the risk of damaging its natural resources with rapid and in some cases unregulated development. It's coming in every which way and it's not just on the fringes of New Braunfels growing out or the Canyon Lake area, it's all over now. So you have these beautiful open landscapes that are natural areas or even agricultural lands and they're converting into subdivisions and strip centers and quarries in some cases. And damage to caves like this one have been documented. In fact, this road, according to the landowner, was once slated to come right over the cave. That plan was abandoned, but Baloo's mission here is to give landowners options. Many of them are feeling so much pressure from developers calling them every week to buy their land um, that we work with them to put conservation easements on their property. That would protect the land and what's below for years to come. The question then becomes, can preservation of natural resources and development of Comal County coexist? It needs to be planned better and it needs to be, um, there need to be many areas that are not just part of a subdivision development that's maybe done right, um, but how about a county park? <laughs> how about a state park? Planning, says Baloo, that's needed to preserve Kamau County's unique setting, above and below ground. It looks like a fun story to go do. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. So, yeah, we, we went into this cave. It was a small opening, which you get in there, it opens up. But there were some pretty small crevices. We ran into a bat. But the, the whole idea here is to understand how the aquifer works. So uh, we'll be doing a case that explains coming up tomorrow. It's going to air on our digital platforms. There you go. Uh, and uh, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and I really dug deep on this one to talk about the aquifer. And I know we've done stories about it, but this is a comprehensive thing. So we really cover all aspects of the aquifer. Why we tell you the aquifer number every day, how that gets measured, why it's important. Uh, we talk about the Edwards Aquifer Authority, the role it plays. And there's, there's just a lot there. We're excited to share it with everybody. And it, it's, uh, it's a passion of mine, the aquifer. Yeah. To kind of, and I learned more about it just doing some of these stories. So this is a deep dive on a truly deep topic? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. It's deep all the way around. <laughs> good. good. Yeah. That's yeah. a good thing. All right, look, we're looking forward to it. Yep. Tomorrow at 7? Yes, uh, in case that explains. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available anyway you stream. All Coming right. Up tomorrow. Very good. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you, Justin. Yep. 940 right now. You're watching GMSA at 9. Rodeo Road Trip begins for our San Antonio Spurs. And David and RJ are going to be back with a preview next. So the dirt is going inside the AT&T Center, which means the Spurs are about to start the rodeo road trip. And some dirt on possible trade. David and RJ Ooh. here to break down the trip and also wow. discuss some Spurs news, including that upcoming trade deadline. And I was loving hearing the chatter before the newscast <laughs> and then see what actually makes it on the air. <laughs> Uh, this will yeah, be good. We'll talk, we'll talk about this. It, it will. Some stuff does not. Yeah. Some, right. But yeah. this one will, yeah. Some stuff is just chatter. <laughs> <laughs> what go, what, what's said in the newsroom stays Stay in the, the newsroom. News <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it makes that out here. Uh, David, Spurs Rodeo yeah, Road Trip. Here yes, we go. It's yes. uh, right. Wednesday. Uh -huh. They yes. start in Cleveland, so they've had a couple of days to practice, and they needed a couple of days to practice. They're coming off a huge win against Houston, and the big, uh, yeah, it's great stuff. Mm -hmm. The big news coming out of this Houston game, not only did they win, but that guy, is that? Is, that is him. That's, that's him. number uh, 23. Zach Zach got to look. Twice, just to make sure there, there he is. <laughs> Zach Collins, first time he's played in an NBA game in 
almost two years. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Uh, Ten points, seven rebounds, and again, he had been playing with the Austin Spurs, but obviously different level of competition here, so it was good to see Zach get on there, and uh, really, and just, as you mentioned, Dave, it's been a long time. I yeah. think it was like before the bubble. You remember the bubble yeah. in Orlando yes. <laughs> that he played? Yeah. And the thing is, he only played 13 minutes the other night. He had 10 points, so he said he was really nervous, and just, you know, you can only imagine not being able to play for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden, Pop says, Get in there and do your thing. Yeah. And uh, so the first couple of minutes, he was he was nervous, but he settled in, and uh, that's good because they're going to need him on this on this rodeo road trip because yeah. this is going to be a brutal trip. Yeah, eight games in 19 days, mm -hmm. and again, we kick things off here with the game at Cleveland. So they're getting a little bit of a break here, and then they also get the All Star break in between. Right. But you can see right there, tough couple of tough games to start things off. I think the team needs the rest, so hopefully yeah. they're taking advantage of <laughs> it. A couple, like we said, a couple of days of practice because mm -hmm. they played. Friday and they don't play till Wednesday. But here, here's here's the thing with this rodeo road trip: four of the teams that they're going to play are playoff teams. Mm -hmm. Two of them are ranked tenth in their conference, which means they got that play-in game. So I don't count that as a playoff team. And then two are not not even in it. So it's yeah. going to be a uh, it's going to be. I think it's like uh, Cleveland is the number four team in the East. Atlanta, Chicago's right number yep, two. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Miami's number one. And then Memphis in the West is number three team, yeah. playoff team. So no like, gimmies ooh, here. Man. Definitely not. Yep. Definitely not. So, so uh, Spurs right now one and a half out of that last yep. play-in spot. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, they're hanging in there. Yeah. Getting Zach Collins back pretty good. You big know what's, what's weird about this All-Star game? There's only 28 games left in a regular yeah, season. Yeah, I know. It's late. And it's like, it late. really, it feels like it's, I mean, it's in February. But it feels for some reason, usually it's like close to the halfway point of the right. season. But there's only 28 games left. Yeah. So they can they still have a chance to get to that tenth spot and get that play in game four, the playoffs. Yeah, David. Well, we know who's going on the road trip. Let's see who's going to be coming back oh. <laughs> to San Antonio because uh, some big news over the weekend. Apparently, Jakob Pertl is now oh, in trade. This is again, David, I'm all worked up. He's Drop to throw his paper. Drop a pad. <laughs> um, the interesting stuff here. Toronto apparently is very interested in Jakob Pertl. A couple other teams as well. Um, so, David, your thoughts here on the Spurs well, uh, possibly losing their big guy inside. He knows where to find the best restaurants in Toronto. <laughs> he does. He's you know, been there before. He was part of the trade that brought uh, DeMar over here and DeMar Kawhi DeRozan was. to San Antonio and sent that other guy away. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and then uh, Hail. Here, here's the thing. He's averaging 13 points, mm -hmm. almost 14 points a game, nine rebounds a game, and two blocks a game. He only gets two blocks a game, but he alters a lot of shots when mm -hmm. guys try to drive into the lane. So he's got very good defensive prowess down low. And the guy that they want to trade for that's mentioned in this this rumor. Yes, uh, DeMonte Sabonis yeah. from Indiana. of All-star in the Eastern Conference. Indiana is apparently uh, letting the season just go. They're getting rid of a bunch of guys. <laughs> so maybe the Spurs can work a three-team trade here yep. with, with Toronto like and Indiana. I mean, that might be pretty good. He uh, averages 18 points and mm -hmm. 12 rebounds, so a little bit more on points, a little bit more on rebounds, not as many as, many as blocks. However, he does average a little bit better at free throw line. Sorry. And outside, oh. he's an outside shooter yeah. as well. He's averaging 32% from yeah. three point range and 74% from may the not, line, that, so. that, that may work out. I know there's a lot of moving parts there, yeah. but. But it's we'll just it's see. just talk right now, so don't get excited. Okay. <laughs> the uh, are rumor we excited? When's yeah, the deadline? Not yet. Uh, Everybody not hold yet. up your hands. Not like, yet. You have control. Deadline uh, is uh, February 10th, so in a couple of days. February 10th. So, yeah, we should know here pretty soon. We were, were, Spurs already traded Bryn Forbes. Josh Primo getting a little bit more playing time. Right. So, yeah. What were you, okay. what were you saying? Well, I was just saying, <laughs> do this, because we're not trying not to mm -hmm. get too excited. So we're it's waiting. like, you know, pump the brakes. We're waiting. Right. Okay. See what happens. Take your advice. RJ, David, thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Go Spurs, go. There you go, Steph. Go Spurs, go. Thank you, David. All right. <laughs> Love the positivity. <laughs> Justin's back. Hi, hi, Justin. There you go. Hi. Thank yeah, you. I'll do it, too. I'm with you guys. Thank yeah. you. Uh, let's look at the time lapse. Uh, beautiful sunrise this morning. We had some of those high clouds come through. And uh, now the sun's up. We're going to see a gorgeous day. I mean, the weekend was nice. It's hard to beat that, but we may do a little bit better today. 46 degrees right now. Northerly winds at 17. Dew point is at 30. And so the air is still relatively dry. As uh, we look at the satellite picture, we do have some high clouds off to the west. These haven't had a whole lot of success moving east, but we could see some of these a little bit later this afternoon. So we'll call it mostly sunny. Not a big deal. All the rain is down to our south. You see some pretty heavy rain down there around Brownsville as a piece of energy works through. Rest of Texas is uh, really pretty quiet. You can see it here on water vapor, kind of a dip right here. A little piece of energy rounding that and seeing that uh, move off to the north and east. Uh, it's not going to affect us, really. That's the bottom line. Uh, temperatures 46 at the airport, 45 Bolverde, 45 Comfort, 44 in Kerrville. We're at 50 in Del Rio. 
and starting to see some 50s in places like Pleasanton, Beeville, and Victoria. Uh, dew points, they're in the 30s. And really, these dew points don't come up much. We're going to see a relatively dry week uh, with low humidity. And the wind chill, uh, we do have gusty winds this morning, so that's contributing to uh, feels like temperature being a little bit colder than the air temperature. Feels like 39 here in town, 38 Kerrville, 33 Rock Springs. So it is still jacket weather. And you may want a light coat throughout the rest of today. Temperature should get up to about 60 or so. Wind gusts gusting to 23 at the airport, gusting to 16 in Kerrville, gusting to 20 in Rock Springs. The wind forecast keeps it right at about that level through the afternoon. We'll see some gusts 20 to 25, and then tonight those winds will die down some. Uh, looking at the forecast, up around 60 today here in San Antonio, 60 in Hondo, 50s in the Hill Country, and then tonight we'll see those numbers fall back down into the 30s. It will be a little bit chillier tonight than what we saw this morning. Still don't think we get down to freezing though here in town, so we'll call for 34. The Hill Country, they, there will be some temperatures close to freezing here, probably a little colder than what this is showing. Uh, low 30s in Kerrville, maybe a few 20s in the Hill Country as well. Extended forecast. Uh, here's what we're thinking. Breezy today, 60, 65 Tuesday and sunny, 68 Wednesday, mostly sunny. You get the theme here. Uh, the really the only change in the forecast is to add maybe a few small rain chances in there on Saturday with highs in the mid 60s and a little cooler on Sunday. We'll be right back. Hey guys, good morning. Coming up on live Laverne Cox joins us. She'll tell us about her new series inventing Anna. See you soon on live. Good news. We have one incident that has cleared that major accident eastbound 90 at Nogalitos is now clear all lanes back open. But right there on eastbound 410, things are slowing down. It looks like that exit ramp right there in McCullough uh, looks like it's closed, maybe for some type of construction. We see some vehicles over there off there at the exit there. And that's a big deal, folks. Eastbound 410, the, we think the ramp to 281, both north and south, is completely closed for the time being. So keep that in mind as you pass by North Star Mall. And right now it is 46 degrees outside on our way to 60 this afternoon. You really can't beat that in February. We're going to have a great week. Lots of sun. Temperatures cool in the morning, nice in the afternoon. Maybe, maybe a small rain chance on Saturday. We may have a deal, a big, big business deal taking place right here in our own backyard. SeaWorld apparently has offered $3.4 billion to purchase the parent company of Schlitterbahn, Cedar Fair LLC. That's right. And this is only 30 miles from SeaWorld. So it's an unsolicited offer by Orlando based SeaWorld to purchase Cedar Fair and has left a wake that stretches as far as New Braunfels. The Hill Country City, home to one of two Schlitterbahn water parks, are part of Cedar Fair, uh, Cedar Fair LP's portfolio. Uh, Schlitterbahn, uh, according to the Greater New Braunfels Chamber, Schlitterbahn, of course, an anchor employer during summer and produces significant indirect economic impact to local businesses and residents. Uh, however, SeaWorld, which operates Aquatica Water Park next to its namesake park, could see some extra value in Schlitterbahn, a major attraction to the high growth area along, you know, I-35. And a, a vet veteran industry expert uh, uh, who observes theme parks and big deals said there could be some divestiture here. Well, what does that mean? That's a big fancy word for the process of selling off subsidiary business interests or investments. So it remains to be seen. Some say this offer may be too low. Yes. Six Flags made a similar offer. Yeah, for $4 billion. So maybe this won't go anywhere. You guys have a great day.